Who are we going to take next, Mr. Matt? Uh, I don't know. Let's see. Um, let's let's go with Thomas in Utah. I had a little bit of a follow up while we're kind of waiting for Absolutely. that to happen. Um, you know, I think a lot of folks um, on on the moral questions, uh, the fact that there's so much uncertainty. Uh, of what are the consequences of my actions and yeah. stuff? I think that paralyzes people. Yes, and and they and they just are, are sort of unwilling to make a decision under the idea that if I make a decision and it's bad, I've caused something, I've done harm, and uh, I, I think that that kind of clouds a lot of that reasoning that you you gave. Um, there, there's a frustration. Yeah. With. I could take this action, but I don't have perfect knowledge of the universe, so I don't know what all the consequences That's right. are. That's right. There's also decision paralysis where if you have like too many options, you can't make a decision. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And both of these frustrations are solved, and I'm going to put that in air quotes, by appealing to a god, because now you've got somebody who does have perfect knowledge of the universe right. and, and is not going to be crippled. Right. It's not going to be crippled by decision. Uh, <laughs> Paralysis. Giant computer. And if that's the person who's dictating uh, what you think is right or wrong, but then you, basically it's a way of avoiding the difficult work of thinking about morality. Right. But anyway, anyway uh, Thomas in Aura, Utah, thanks for waiting. Hello. Hi. Hey. Um, okay, so I'm trying to think about how this is. Um, as of right now, I'm currently. Um, I'm currently a, a Mormon, mm -hmm. um, but I guess, I don't know how to say it, like, I guess you could say that I've become convinced that it's not true or not necessarily true or whatever. Um, and as far as, like, coming out to my parents about it and my family, um, I really haven't been able to keep my mouth shut about it. Um, <laughs> And so I, I ended up, well, my dad, I don't know how, and I guess over time my dad kind of was wondering, you know, what was going on with me and um, I don't know. It's hard to explain. I'm really nervous. Sorry. No, it's fine. And there's, there's nothing to be nervous about. One of the things is that you say, you know, you're a Mormon, but you don't believe it's true. And, and for some right. people, they would immediately jump on that and say, oh, well, if you don't believe it's true, then you're not a Mormon. Don't worry, I'm not going to do that because I get it. Because there is a cultural association as well. I am part of a family that is Mormon. I have been attending a Mormon church. Uh, the, you're, right. First of all, you are not remotely alone. Uh, we, I, I've gotten emails from other uh, former Mormons and people who are stuck in, in positions where they no longer believe the religion of that their family holds and the one that they're currently involved in, uh, but they don't know what to do. In your case, uh, when you when you say that you can't you can't keep quiet about it and it's been causing problems, uh, what? Uh, so, so I guess I, I'm looking for kind of what is the problem that you think we might have some help for? Um, so. I was asking my dad, and I've been watching, you know, your guys' show a lot, and um, it's really helped me understand that, um, it's helped me understand that there isn't, I guess, there isn't absolute certainty about religious claims. Or, and or, or I would say about anything. I, I'm not convinced that there's absolute certainty about anything. Um, okay. But when it comes to religious claims, I don't even think there's reasonable certainty. Uh, or I don't even think it, you know, like when you when you are looking at a murder trial or, or any number of, of different, there's different standards uh, in, of evidence required to reach a conviction. There's, you know, to a reasonable, or beyond a reasonable doubt, to a reasonable certainty, there's to a preponderance of the evidence. When it comes to religions, I, I don't, not only do I not think any of those have been met, I would, if I was the judge, I would throw the case out for for cause, for lack of cause, before we even got around to putting it on trial, because this is nothing but um, unfounded assertions. A whole bunch of people believe that this is the case, and they can offer nothing substantive. Um, so I don't even think that the trial should be brought. Unfortunately, we live in a you know a world where a lot of people do, and so you have to evaluate those things. Right. Um, one of the I guess one of the biggest arguments that my dad had um, was that. He was kind of telling me, well, if the church is honestly what it says it is, 
and the way that we can know if God is real or that the church is true or anything, um, then it would be through the method that God has set, you know, um, saying that you, you know, you have to pray to know whether he's there and that he loves you and that the church is true. And, you know, if he's honestly there, then he will let you know through the spirit. Okay. Um, so I guess the first question is, how could you confirm that that's actually happened? Well, okay, and I asked my dad this, and he said that he said that the spirit would basically be telling you that what you're having a spiritual experience about um, is a spiritual experience. Does that make sense? Well, I, I I would say I would say no, it doesn't make sense. Except that I, I kind of get you know what his point is. Um, the question is. First of all, I don't know how to tell that a, I don't, I don't know what a spiritual experience is. I don't know how to verify that somebody, including myself, has actually had one. Um, there's, doesn't seem to be, it, it, by the way, it sets it up so that there can be no independent verification. It becomes an individual appeal to a divine revelation. And, okay. You know, going back to Hume, revelation is necessarily first person and to everybody else it's hearsay. So your revelation does me no good. My revelation does you no good as far as having a foundation. But I think it's worse than that because my revelation doesn't do any, any good on its own about telling me what's actually true. And the argument is, ah, God is perfect. And if God is perfect, he will reveal himself to you in a way that you can, in fact, be confident uh, and rationally justified in believing. I don't know how that works either, because at a minimum, if we were to begin to accept that this supernatural realm exists, um, under many of the models, there are there's a devil and demons who are also supernatural and powerful, who are out to deceive you. So even if you had an experience that was in fact supernatural, even though you couldn't confirm it, I don't know how you could confirm the truth of it if there is something out there that's that is more powerful than you that is trying to deceive you, right? Which is why, um, which is why, uh, which is why a number of Christian denominations view Mormonism as a cult, <laughs> and why they view Catholicism as a cult, and why they view basically my religion's the right one, and all the rest of them are cults. And most of these are saying this about most of the others that. If there was a God, why would he pick this individual method of revelation which cannot be verified and is prone to abuse under his own system? And th th basically there's an argument against theism called the argument from inconsistent revelation, which is all of these people are running around convinced that they have had a revelation from God, they are all convinced that it's true, and all of these revel revelations are in conflict with one another. By a reductio ad absurdum argument, you can show that they can't all be right, but they right. could all be wrong. Right. And if you're, in a, if you're not in a position to be able to tell which of them is actually right, then the only rational position is to reject all of them not to say they're false, but to say, I cannot believe that they're true. Right. So I guess my last question is, I guess I don't completely understand what independent verification means in this context. Oh, it's really easy. Hey, Don, how many cameras are in front of us? There are three. See, I've just verified it from somebody other than myself. Um, okay. that, that's how we go about, so reality it's been said that rea reality is, or the, uh, the things that are true, or reality is what doesn't go away when you stop believing in it, but also <laughs> that reality is what we agree uh, is there. So I could, you know, maybe stop believing the cameras, they'd stay there. But the other aspect is that reality is what we agree on. The way science goes about exploring the world, it doesn't make proclamations about truth. It doesn't say, oh, X is true. It builds models which are probabilistic and that are tentative. tentative based on the information and it constantly seeks independent verification. Hey, I just did this experiment and these are the results I got. Would you go and do the same experiment without me 
and see if you get the same results. And if we continue to get consistent results, now all of a sudden we have a model that appears to be consistent with reality and is supported by evidence. That doesn't happen with religion. As a matter of fact, as I, as I pointed out on a Facebook comment yesterday, creationists do not try to prove the truth of creationism. They spend their time arguing against evolution as if that would prop up their belief. Theologians are not experts on gods. Theologians are experts on what other theologians have said about God. <laughs> they have no expertise, they have no demonstration of truth, and instead of trying to demonstrate the proof of theism that they're doing, they just assert it or they come up with unfalsifiable claims about it, and then they spend their time, as you've heard from callers and seen in uh, uh, debates, saying, ah, oh, on the view of atheistic naturalism, this can't account for it. We can't give an account for objective morality. We can't give an account for whether or not we're a brain in a vat. We can't. They, they just basically say, here's all these things that we wish were true, that we're not brains in vats, that we have an objective standard. You can't account for those things. My view can, therefore I win. That doesn't confirm their view mm -hmm. at all. They're not, theologians have no demonstrated expertise in anything except what other theologians have said. Okay. <laughs> the the emperor the emperor has no clothes, and they're trying to redefine the word naked so that it doesn't apply to their emperor. But okay. on that note, Thomas, I, I appreciate it. I, I wish you good luck. By all means, you you can also email TV at atheist-community.org uh, or call back again okay. if you have other questions. Um, good luck with your coming out process. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, well, yeah. Thank you.